I wanted to be a pilot and an astronaut. And uh, so I've always wanted to do that. And I was a member of the Church of the Open Door for since I was 10 years old. So I grew up in the downtown church and then uh, went to UCLA and uh, joined the Air, Air Force ROTC, Air Force Reserve Officers Training Corps. And, uh, yeah, graduated in 1959, I think. Went into the Air Force. After about a three-month delay, they activated me three months. So I got to take take it easy for three months. And then I went into the Air Force. Um, let's see. Uh, by the way, the washout rate for the pilots from the very start to the end was like 80%. And it wasn't because they couldn't fly. A lot of them just kind of gave up. Call it self-initiated elimination, S-I-E. The stress of being in a different type of environment or something. Yeah, so I uh, actually became a combat crew member when I was 24 or 25. And uh, then I was assigned to the B-47 as a co-pilot. I flew that for, say, two and a half years. And then about the same time length as an aircraft commander in the B-47. And then they took that out of the envir- out of the inventory, the B-47, which did not get its, was not involved in Vietnam. In fact, the B-47, in my opinion, was the very best weapon the Air Force had because it never went to war. It was the best deterrent uh, weapon we've had. It was up to 1,500 of those airplanes and each of them carried an H-bomb, but we've never had to drop it. And I was assigned to the P-52 as a B-50, as an aircraft commander. And uh, I was initially assigned to Columbus Air Force Base, Mississippi. And I had previously met my wife in Mississippi in pilot training, Greenville Air Force Base. And uh, so uh, went, then I was assigned to the B-52, and uh, I was assigned to a crew that came in from another base without an aircraft commander, so they put me on their crew. So I was very fortunate to have an experienced crew, and uh, so that was, that was very nice. The good news was... I was always a combat crew member, so I didn't have to do extra duties to pull alert duty with the uh, H-bombs. That was all I, I did, uh, which is a pretty serious thing. You know, I was one of those few pilots throughout those 10 years that if we went to war, I would be one of those guys. Nineteen sixty-seven and sixty-eight, six months, and we flew out of Guam and out of Utapao, Thailand, kind of almost half and half. I never actually was in Vietnam. I was over Vietnam. I flew airplanes, dropped bombs, because I didn't interact, except flying combat missions, and I was at the base, which was not in Vietnam. Those other guys were in Vietnam. But I flew out of Thailand and Guam, Guam being part of the United States. So I, that's, that's all I can say about that. Not invaded by anybody. If I recall, they were, have not been at, uh, at war with anybody for many, many decades, maybe even a hundred years. Although we flew combat missions out of Thailand. When I was during that six months tour, uh, we had like a three day cycle. When we were in in Guam, we had a three day cycle. We'd uh, have one day off 
where we could play tennis or anything. And then one day of preparing another airplane for a flight, a combat mission. And then the third day, we would actually fly an airplane that had been prepared by another crew. And then we would fly the 12 hour flight, come back, wind down at a little place called Gilligan's Island. And, uh, then as I say, the next day we would have off and then we'd be another pre-flight crew. And then the third day we'd fly another mission. And it just went on and on like that. We all went on R and R about twice, maybe. One time was in Australia, and then we had a few days off at a time in Bangkok, Thailand. And I bought some silverware, bronzeware, 